There's one common misconception around the idea of freedom almost almost nobody speaks about. And understanding this is important because it actually makes the difference between feeling free and feeling trapped. But even more important, acceptance is the key. And speaking from experience, I know that most people have a hard time accepting what I'm about to tell you, so uh, let's find out if you can. Hey, um, can I be honest with you? No, what I'm about to tell you for the longest time well, I'm alive, I didn't get that. And when I got it, I just felt like... What? So, if you understand this from the get-go, you might already be ahead of me, but if you're anything like me and you intuitively feel like, this can't be quite right, please stick with me, we'll get to that. But for now, let's get out. In my last video, I said something somewhat controversial. There is no ultimate freedom. Now I know that a lot of people have the intuition that this can't be right, so let's maybe try and tackle this from another angle. Imagine a dot inside a box. The dot is our subject. Could be a human, could be an animal, could be anything. And it lives inside the box. The question now is, is it free? And please, please, let's keep it simple for now. I'm not asking for the dot's mindset, for its personal beliefs, or its finances, or whatever, okay? Let's stick to the concept for now. This is simple for a reason. So, is the dot free? I don't think there is one simple answer to that because... This is Rania. She's my creator friend, she makes fun, beautiful, creative videos and she's just the person I needed for this thought experiment. How would you describe your relationship and education in philosophy? Oh! <laughs> If, it's, if I put in a percentage, I'll be like 10%. You know the questions you get before you go to bed? That's it. As you know, our topic is freedom and we have a dot in a box. And the mm -hmm. question now is, is the dot free? The, I don't think there is one simple answer to that because maybe the dot doesn't know that there is a box. Like in the box, there's a space between, an empty space between the dot and the box. That's the freedom for the dot. It can't go outside of the box, so it's limited by the box. That's an extremely good answer, but like I said, keep it simple. You said maybe the dot doesn't know, like it's a dot in a box. Okay. That is not easy. To me, no, it's not free. If it's a yes or no answer. No. It's, it's trapped inside a closed box, that's the whole idea. But what if we erase the box? Hmm, okay. So keeping it simple, and if we link it to the first video, yes, because I base my definition of freedom on the box. So taking away the box, that is the limit of freedom to the dot. Yes, the dot is free. But if I can go into more detail, there is another box. When we erase the box, the dot is still on a solar panel, which is kind of, in and of itself, another box. Now, let's imagine I'd tear the solar panel off, which I won't do, for obvious reasons. Then the dot would be on the roof of the van, which is not a box in a two-dimensional sense, but I think you get the idea. So let's go maybe one step further and punch the dot through the roof, inside the van. Is it free now? There's always going to be a bigger box. There will never be a total freedom to the dots. So there's always going to be a box inside of a box inside of a box. Funny enough, this scenario is a little bit more obvious because I'm like literally standing inside a box. And even though the dot is floating freely in the air, it is confined to this space. But what about this case? The dot is floating around in the natural environment, basically the place you and I exist in. There's going to be the room and then the apartment, then the planet Earth. There's unlimited, we don't know that, so there's always going to be something inside of something. And to which extent is the dot going to be free? This is where we need to abandon the whole idea of a box and replace it or exchange it with a different concept. Even though the dot is not literally sitting inside some kind of container, it is still contained in some kind of space, in an ecosystem, an environment. And this place is part of a village, which is part of an area, which is part of a country, which is part of a continent, which is part of the big ecosystem we call Earth, which is itself, ironically, a dot in space. So the idea of this whole analogy here is not to prove that there's always a box. No, the idea is, or rather the understanding should be, that things always need a space in which they can be. 
a ground for their existence, or to put it in different words, a space in which they can exist. Van life, for instance, can be both, freedom and confinement. People like me who freely choose to live in a van embrace the flexibility of freely roaming around, choosing minimalism over consumerism, adventure over routine. Whereas people who have no other choice, who cannot afford anything else, have to live in one small metallic room on four wheels without access to even the most basic comforts of modern life. This space can contain two very different scenarios, and it's neither the space nor the person that constitutes the freedom, if you can even say that. If you just have a van without a person, that seems out of context. If you have a person without any context, that also doesn't tell you much about their status of freedom, does it? What is crucial here is the interaction and relation between them. How does this particular person relate to this particular space in this particular context? Or to get back to our topic, transition, 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 transition. What does freedom even mean in the absence of restrictions? We uh, link freedom to being limited or unlimited by something. So if we take away that something, we said that there's always going to be another something that's limiting you. Like I said, the dot may not know that there is a box, so maybe to it, it's free. So us as people, like I would say freedom would be able to do anything however you want it, wherever you want, without having any restrictions, any limits to it. That would be freedom, but that's kind of extreme too, because <laughs> that goes into other to topics. You want to hear my take? I think it's meaningless. Opposites and restrictions define the edges and limits of a space. And since freedom is a concept, it is not an actual space or a literal room, but it is a conceptual space, and that space gets defined by us and our ideas about it. When we say, that's not freedom, we metaphorically draw a line in the sand. And by drawing many lines, we create a room. And that room is not a box, and freedom is not trapped inside. That room provides the ground for freedom to exist, which is why there's no ultimate freedom. Freedom does not mean to escape all restrictions, but to embrace them. That is not to say to simply accept or go along with them, but to figure out the best way possible how to live with them or not be bothered by those restrictions and limitations, or at least as little as possible. What I'm trying to say is, you can stop the fight. If you're not subject to straight out oppression or some horrific circumstances, which, if you can satisfy all basic needs and you're watching this in the comfort of your home, you you probably aren't. You are not struggling for freedom, even though it sometimes might feel like it, but what you're struggling with is the frame of your life. And if you reject that, I totally understand. Like I said, this just feels intuitively wrong. Because if I pick away at my restrictions, if I get rid of them one by one, until I'm left to do whatever I want, I will be totally and completely free, right? Well, let me ask you then, is doing whatever you want, regardless of the consequences this will have on others and the space you live in, is that freedom? It is not an easy topic. <laughs> um, to me, if I am free to hit someone and I go outside and I start hitting people, because just because I wanted to, yeah, I'm just gonna go out and just start slapping people. It, it is doing what I, what I want to whoever I want. So I was in that situation free to do what I wanted, but there was going to be consequences. So is that really worth the word of being free? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's where our intuitions clash. Doing whatever you want sounds nice and all until someone gets hurt or until you need someone who also wants to do whatever he or she wants to, to do something for you, if that made any sense. What I'm trying to say, or rather trying to ask is, can restricting someone else's freedom be part of your freedom? That just seems wrong to me. I personally think it has very little to do with freedom and quite a lot with irresponsibility, since being responsible is not an easy choice. 
you could say just in order to make that choice, it requires a certain degree of security and freedom. So what will it be? Freedom or responsibility? Let's maybe talk about this next time. I see you. <laughs>